Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So I am in here in my office, like literally on my hands and knees, cleaning and organizing and trying to make sense of all of this library stuff I have going on. Like I have a home library at this point and I need to face the facts. I've got to get rid of some books. I have stacks. You can see stacks. Um, I don't want stacks. Like I have shelves. I just have my books on shelves but I have way too many books. So a lot of what I'm gonna be getting rid of are duplicates, like things that I just have two copies of, or things that I have loved so much that I've replaced with a nicer copy, and then some things that I just don't think I'm gonna get around to reading, or my taste has changed, and I don't think it's gonna be my style anymore. Either way, I've got a stack of books here that looks really puny. I felt like I did a good job when I was purging, but now that I'm looking at it, there's no way I'm going to be able to like get rid of my stacks based on how much I'm giving away. But either way, every bit counts, right? So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm getting rid of. Um, I'm going to be listing some of these things on Pango Books, some on Mercari, like things that are sets. I think they're easier to list on Mercari. So I'll place links below if anyone's interested in grabbing any of these things. But trust me, I'm not looking to make a bunch of money. I really just want the space. And it pains me so much to get rid of books that I do want to make sure that they're going to a good home. So some of these I'll probably donate, maybe take by the library or the used bookstore, maybe get some credit. But like I said, I will list some of them on Pango if I think it's something that anybody might want. So let's jump straight into it. All right, let's start with some Brandon Sanderson. So I am going to be offloading some Brandon Sanderson, but only because all of my Sanderson matches hardcovers, standard US hardcovers. So I've got some mass market paperbacks that I have replaced with hardcovers. And I have one little wonky guy that doesn't match. So first I'm going to get rid of two versions of Warbreaker. I love this book. I will definitely be replacing these with a standard US hardcover. But as you can see, I have a mass market paperback that's pretty well loved. And I also have this. And this was hard to get rid of because it is signed. And it's been kept nice the whole time I've had it at least. Um, I think it might be a first edition, but it's some like book club or something like that because it's an odd size and it's just an eyesore sitting next to all my other Brandon Sanderson's. It is such an eyesore because it's just too short. So it is cool. Like I said, um, it is signed. It's in great condition, but it bothers me every time I look at it. And Warbreaker is a great book. So I'll definitely be replacing it. I'm trying to find the signature here. I'll definitely, there it is. I'll definitely be replacing this because it's a book that I want to own for sure. But it started just driving me crazy that I had two tiny copies of it when what I really want is a big hardcover. We'll go ahead and do some more Brandon Sanderson. Let's just stay on theme. I am going to be getting rid of my mass market copy of Elantris. I don't have this one in hardcover yet either. Elantris is like the one Brandon Sanderson book that I actively disliked. And I will be replacing this with a hardcover if I can find it. Um, if it just falls in my lap, I'll buy it because I'm a completionist. I would like for them to all match and like, why not? But I'm not going to be actively hunting for it because it's a book that I just really didn't enjoy that much. But either way, this guy can go. He's mass market. He doesn't match. And it's a book that I didn't really like that much anyway. But these books I loved. These are Miss Born Era 1. And it's a mass market set of the trilogy and I have them in hardcovers. And so I just really think it's time for these to find a new home because this is a series I love recommending to people. I love when people read it. It is a great example of like world building and a hard complex magic system that's still really accessible and fun to read about. So I love recommending this trilogy and I can't wait to figure out who I'm going to give these to. Um, I mean, I might sell them, but this is something, this is the kind of thing I like to give away because I like to watch people read it. <laughs> I've already given one um, copy of this trilogy away to my best friend's son. He's 16 and he has gotten into reading fantasy and that has been so fun for me to like recommend stuff to him and send him stuff in the mail. So I bought him his own set of this but I'm trying to think if there's any other new to fantasy readers who I can send this to because it is such a great recommendation. I just have a nicer set. Speaking of my best friend's son, his name's Stephen, by the way, but another set that I think I'm going to send straight to him to get them off my shelves, but also give him something that I think he'll really enjoy, I'm going to send him my Codex Alera books. So this was a series that I'm glad I read 
and I didn't dislike it, but it's not something I see myself reading again or just like trying to like force my husband or my brother to read it. This, I'm trying to figure out a way to say this without sounding kind of pretentious, but I feel like this is a series that if I had discovered it earlier in my reading journey, I would have maybe appreciated it or enjoyed it more. Um, on paper, I really like this story because it has a lot of the things I love. It checks a lot of the boxes. It's very creative. It felt unique. There are so many things I liked about it, but something that's just intangible, I can't put my finger on what it is. Something about it didn't work for me. I don't know. So it's definitely not a dislike. I'm glad I read them, but I think they will be serving a better purpose on Steven's shelf right now than they will on mine. Because even for mass markets, these are kind of fat boys and they take up half a shelf. So if I didn't love them and I don't think I'm gonna read them again, and I think that somebody else that I know has the potential to really enjoy them, then I'm gonna pass them along. So that's what I'm gonna do with these. I was going through my stack and apparently there's another one. There's six Codex Alera books. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be sending him all of them. So now let's go through this stack of some more just kind of random mass market paperbacks. Um, this one is The Heart of What Was Lost by Tad Williams. This is a little sequel novella that goes with Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. I haven't read it yet, but I found a hardcover at um, Books A Million recently and it was like four bucks. So I went ahead and picked it up and this is brand new, never been read out of. I will pass that along to somebody else. This is The Last Wish and it is the first book you would read when you are starting the Witcher series. I know some people are kind of confused about that because it's two short story collections and then the novels. You do need to read the short story collections. Don't skip them. They're super, super good. Um, basically, I started building a collection and then gave them to my brother and then got this guy when I was thinking about restarting my collection. And then I just never really got around to it. And now they have those new editions out. So if I restart that collection and pick that series back up, I'll probably do it with those newer editions. So I'm just going to get rid of this one because this is just isn't how I want to build my collection. If I even go back down that road, um, I really liked the short story collections and I quite enjoyed the first couple of novels and I can't decide if I stopped liking it or if I just kind of fizzled out because that was right when I got back into reading like at the very very beginning and I started First Law right after that and that just like suited my fancy so much more than the Witcher books but I am interested in coming back to them if for nothing else other than the fact that the audiobook narrator is Peter Kenny and I don't know why he doesn't narrate more fantasy novels because he is phenomenal. But that alone makes me want to come back to them because I enjoy the experience so much. But either way, if I do it, I'm buying new books and that one's just, it's time to go. This is Voyager and it's book two of the Outlander series. And I do still plan to start this series this year, but I found a trade paperback. You can see it right back there. Found out a couple bucks. It's like really nice condition. So I think as I collect them, I'm going to do them all in trade paperback. So I don't need this anymore. Next is Congo by Michael Crichton, which is a book I love, but I already have it twice over actually. I have a hardcover of it and then I have it in a hardcover bind up with two other novels. And so I really don't need to have a third copy of it, just taking up space on my shelves. But I will definitely find somebody who I want to read this because I think it's a pretty good starting point for Michael Crichton. And I just like getting books into the hands of people who are actually going to read them. So I'm gonna find a good home for this one. When I was doing all my cleaning and organizing, I realized that somehow I have two copies of Peace Talks, which is number, I don't even remember, like 15 or 16 of the Dresden Files, but I got to get this in someone else's hands because I definitely don't need two absolutely identical copies of Peace Talks. So I picked, I picked the one that looks brand new, like no one's even opened this book. And I will make sure that someone who wants it gets it. Oops, I found another Brandon Sanderson in the file. Um, this one is The Rhythmus by Brando Sando. And I think this is middle grade. I'm just not particularly interested in it. I've tried to sell it to both of my kids and neither of them act like they want to pick it up either. So rather than just save it for them, which I tend to just try to hoard things and be like, maybe someday we'll use this. I think it would be better to get it into the hands of somebody who wants to read it right away. So I'm on the hunt to find the perfect reader for the Rhythmist. Okay, this one's a little more difficult for me to get rid of because I wanted to like this and I do think it's very, very cool, but 
books are entertainment for me, obviously, and I just don't think this is the way that I like to be entertained when it comes to books. Like this is an activity. Like this is not a sit down and read it type of book. This is a project. And I'm not even saying that to be negative about it because I think some people are really looking for that. And I stand by the fact that I think the concept is amazing, like very, very cool. But I tried to read this book. I tried to follow along and do it and I just couldn't get into it. So this is S, which is a concept book by Doug Dorst and JJ Abrams. And it's a book about people reading a book and solving a mystery through the pages of an exchange library book. And like I said, I think the concept is awesome. And I want to want to like this, but man, I flipped through this so many times and I'm beyond intrigued by it. When it came down to it, this is just not how my brain works. Like if I'm gonna read something, I wanna sit down and read it. And this was just too much of a project for me. It's just not something I see myself getting to. And I kind of wanted to keep it on my shelf to be cool and tell myself that maybe I'd get to it someday, but I just really don't think I will. So I'm going to be um, sending this to somebody who I think will actually enjoy the project. I am going to part ways with my copy of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. You can watch my review for this. It's what I call a very good book that I just didn't care for. The subject matter is just not something that I like reading about or being fully immersed in. So I enjoyed Taylor Jenkins Reid and her writing style. I think the book is objectively good. I understand why it's very popular. I just didn't really care for it. So part of me wants to keep it because I don't know, like I know it's not a bad book, but I know I'm not gonna read it again. So I'm gonna pass this along to somebody who will read it. This is Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice. And we have here is a pretty nice trade paperback copy but I have already gotten rid of books one and two in mass market. It was like all mishmashed and you know, different sizes. So I got rid of those and I have a hardcover bind up of the whole Vampire Chronicles. So I'm just gonna keep that one and just get rid of stuff that doesn't match. Speaking of stuff that doesn't match, I got, ugh, I hate when this happens. So <laughs> this is uh, Anna Stevens. And what do we call this? I forget. God, is it the God Blind series? I can't remember if it's the name. Anyway, book one is called God Blind, and I think the trilogy is called God Blind as well. But either way, I read this first book and I liked it, didn't love it, and just kind of didn't come back around to it for no real reason. I didn't plan on DNFing it, but you know, you know what happens. Things get out of control, your TBR grows, you get FOMO, you forget about what you're doing. I forgot what I was doing with the series for a long time. So I'm like, if I haven't come back to it yet, I'm probably not going to, but it never stopped bothering me that the three books I have don't match. So I'm gonna get rid of them. I picked up this Sword of Shannara trilogy a long time ago from like a thrift store or something. I think I paid like seven books. It's a big hardcover and it has all three books in it. But the thing is, I just don't think I'm going to get around to reading this. I never have. And from everything I can tell about even people who love Shannara and Terry Brooks, I think it would be kind of a step backwards at this point in my fantasy reading journey. And I don't think I would enjoy it as much now as if I had read it more towards the beginning of my, you know, being an adult fantasy reader. So I know a lot of people have a lot of love for this. I know it has drawn from um, a lot of our favorites when it comes to inspiration, and I'm sure it has inspired a lot of things that I currently love. I just feel like I may have outgrown it and I may not appreciate it as much now. So I am going to pass this along to somebody else. And this is the one that pains me the most, if I'm being honest, because it seems illegal. Like it seems wrong to get rid of Joe Abercrombie books, especially First Law Joe Abercrombie. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I got these 10th anniversary edition hardcovers um, a couple years ago, and I've just never been that impressed with them. Like, I'm very in love with the covers and the simplicity of them. And I like the foil. I like a lot about them aesthetically, but it bothers me that they are an odd size and I just don't think they're that nice. Like this is not a great job. Like I'm going to sell these, so I'm not doing a great job of selling them. 
but the the binding to me is underwhelming the quality of the paper all that kind of stuff like i guess i was just kind of hoping for like special editions and instead they just feel kind of regular edition and they don't match size wise so i have hard covers of the trilogy i have trade paperbacks of the trilogy i'm keeping duplicates i'm weird i can't let go of them but these every time i see them i just wish they were different than they are um, I'm going to hope that somebody who has always wanted these is able to get their hands on them because I don't know on paper I should like these because I love the covers. I just want them to be normal hardcover size and I just feel like I mean could you not throw us a bone? There's not a single illustration. The, the paper stock is not a nice quality. The binding feels kind of like crackly and I don't know. I'm getting rid of them just because they just don't spark as much joy as they should. So I'm holding out. I'm someday going to get like really, really nice editions. Somebody will make like ridiculously priced editions and I will fold and I will buy them because I love this trilogy. But you know, the special editions just don't do it for me. So I'm going to let them go. Okay, I just made this decision like right now. But I do think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my... What do we call this series? The Shattered Sea. So yeah, speaking of Joe Abercrombie, I am going to get rid of my Shattered Seas trilogy. Um, I read the first book with a buddy group, like read along thing, and I quite liked it. It you know, wasn't blown away, but I was like, I really like the protagonist. I think this is cool. I'm, 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 I'm digging it. This is an arc. That's kind of cool, right? not signed but it's an arc and then the other two are hardcover second book was a little underwhelming wasn't really super happy with the direction it went and then the third book i did dnf at around like 15 percent. so i'm not wild on this trilogy but i can name like five or six other people that i know that love it so it's clearly one of those things that it's just not for me but it doesn't mean that it's not good or that you won't like it so i think i am going to go ahead and pass these along it I don't know. It feels weird getting rid of Joe Abercrombie books, but at the same time, if I don't love them, if I'm not going to read them again, then I probably should give someone else a chance at them. So I think I'm getting rid of them. <laughs> All right. It's kind of weird looking at this big stack of books, knowing that like they're not going to be mine anymore. But I am grateful for the space because now I can get some stuff off the floor and just get a little more organized. So I'm going to leave some links below. Check them out if you want to. I have no idea if I have anything here that anybody would be interested in. But like I said, some of these are getting um, mailed away to friends. Some are going to be given away or donated. And if I think there's anything here that anyone might be interested in, I will post a link below. And you guys can check that out. So thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, keep me in your thoughts and prayers because getting rid of books, it's not easy. <laughs> for a collector or a hoarder or whatever I am. So thanks for watching and you guys have a good day.